to fight Cthulhu, or really star spawn in general. Remember, Cthulhu is not a unique godlike thing like Thor or Odin. He is a representative of an entire species. Now, he is their high priest, their leader. He's somehow special to them. But, I mean, Odin's not a hundred times bigger than the other Asgardians. Cthulhu may not be a hundred times bigger than the Starspawns. I mean, may, he might be, because they don't follow the same laws. We don't know. So let's talk about Cthulhu and his star spawn and how we could beat them. First, <coughs> Lovecraft says straight up that they come from somewhere where the natural laws are different. What the heck does this mean? Are, how Cthulhu is still subject to gravity, right? Uh, in our cosmology, we don't really consider the possibility that there's different natural laws somewhere else, sort of because we can't if we want to make any kind of predictions. And when we see things far off, we can sort of tell what's going on. There's mysterious things going on. There's the perceived structure of the universe at a distance. There's dark matter, whatever the heck that is. There's, uh, there's the way black holes really work. Um, well, Lovecraft didn't define what he meant by saying the natural laws are different. He left it vague. But what if the star spawn and things like that are made of exotic matter. So what's exotic matter? Exotic matter is matter that is not made up of the normal proton, neutron, the nucleus with an electron spinning around. For example, there is a substance called positronium. This is made of one electron and one positron, the antiparticle electron, spinning around each other in a stable arrangement. Now, it's in our world, it's not very stable, but it does last for a little bit. Now, positronium can actually form chemical compounds with other atoms, even though it has no nucleus. Now, we don't even know all the possibilities of positronium because we can't make it stay around long enough to do that. Then, there are other particle-antiparticle combinations. These are all called onions. Uh, so you'd have like a... Uh, a, posit a proton with an antiproton, a neutron with an anti that kind of thing, okay? So that's one kind of exotic matter, these weird balanced things. Then, what about atoms that are formed with a side particle that is not an electron? Like an atom using a muon, or an atom using a hadron instead of electron. These aren't clearly understood by us. We know they exist. We don't know their properties. There's other complex ideas. There's whatever dark matter is made of. There is objects that have a complex mass. In other words, a mass based on the square root of negative one. And there are other states of matter. Imagine super strings, as you know, which are ruptures in space at multiple dimensions that were bound into a super liquid or photonic matter. This is a thing in which photons bind together as if they had mass. All these, the superstrings, the photonic matter, all these things are real. Their capabilities are unknown to us. We can't get a handle on them. But if Cthulhu comes from a place where this is what it is, if he's made of superstrings and not made of atoms like we know it, the would this explain why he can shape shift? Uh, maybe. Maybe he's not actually a shifting shape. Maybe he's transforming the matter where he wants to be into his matter and eliminating his matter in an area where he doesn't want to be. I don't know. Maybe he's actually blobbing around. How would physical objects interact with something made of muonic atoms or hadron atoms or complex mass? Or there's the concept also talked about, which is negative mass. We have positive mass. We have things with zero mass, like photons. What about negative mass? Well, if negative mass exists, then things with a negative mass would have to move faster than light. That's our understanding. So could Cthulhu have negative mass then? Well, yeah, he could be partly have that. It's easy to imagine negative mass moving faster than light inside Cthulhu's body, keeping it going, okay? so. Some people have pondered how Cthulhu can fly with his huge body. As we said, as I said in a previous video, he's 100 meters high, at least. So how can that fly? He has wings, that's goofy. You can't fly when you're that big. Well, obviously it could use more of its mass to make the wings bigger. But more importantly, if it has negative mass in its body and it can change the proportion of negative mass, it can adjust its overall perceived weight and mass at will. If Cthulhu wants to weigh one gram, it just does it. And 
if it's traveling between star systems and it turns all its bodies into negative mass all at once, it's going faster than light. That's got to be really useful for something like Cthulhu. But it may not even have to do that to move from planet to planet because it's described as plunging from star to star. We don't know what that means. It sounds like a leap, right? And we know Cthulhu can mess with geometry. In the story by Lovecraft, Dreams in the Witch House, a human witch uses geometry to travel between worlds and between dimensions and to extend her life enormously. If a human can master this power, it's got to be child's play to Cthulhu. He's got to have no problem gating between worlds. All the ramifications of this warping space aren't clear. I just want to make it obvious that Cthulhu really can follow natural laws or seemingly follow natural laws other than our own, even with our understanding of how the universe works. So, can we fight them? We know it's possible because the star spawn fought wars against the great race of Yith and the old ones, the elder things. Both of these species are composed of normal matter like us, not bizarre matter. So, using normal matter, they could hold back Cthulhu and the star spawn, even win temporarily against him. Now, they were tougher beings than we are. They had more powerful minds and more advanced technology, but at least it's possible with normal matter to fight Cthulhu and have a chance. So let's consider the ramifications of an attack by star spawn. The first thing that's going to happen is a telepathic effect, a broadcast from the star spawn. Star spawn and Cthulhu don't speak verbally. They communicate by dream images by mental images, okay? That means, by the way, that the word Cthulhu that we use, Cthulhu never says it. He invented that word for humans to use to describe it, which is, makes it interesting that he made it unpronounceable because I guess that's what he wanted. So, if you have a strong mind when the star spawn comes in, its telepathic effect is going to seem to you like a nightmare or a hideous vision like in a horror movie, okay? It's not that the star spawn is projecting fear, necessarily. It's that the star spawn's mind is so alien that any contact with it is upsetting and disturbing to the human mind. The next feature is that some people with weaker minds or neuroses or pre-existing conditions, they're going to go crazy. Now, when Cthulhu rises, it's always described as an orgy of madness, so presumably some of them are going homicidally insane. So let's take my town, Rockwall. We have 40,000 people living here. If a star spawn came from Lake Rockwall, yes, there is one, rose up in the middle of town, <coughs> then let's say 1% of the people went homicidally insane. That would give us 400 insane killers rampaging around. Now, that's going to have quite an impact. Even worse, some of the 39,600 people who didn't go homicidally insane are still going to be incapacitated. They're going to be barricading themselves in their rooms, screaming in fear, writhing on the ground. I don't know what percentage is, 25, 30, 40 percent? The cops of Rockwall, the ones who aren't incapacitated or homicidally insane themselves, are going to have their hands full dealing just with the 400 crazy guys killing people. And this is before the star spawn even gets to town. This is just the, the fringe effect, okay? Now, when Cthulhu rose from his tomb, a tangible darkness came with him, okay? Now, the star spawn's smart. It knows that we see by light. I'm sure it can produce a fog or mist from the lake too. So there's fog. We can't see well. We can't see long distances. This is going to play off more into the geometry thing. Above the fog, we see this giant gelatinous green immensity rising as the star spawn moves forward. It's rampaging. Well, we can't see with our hand in our face below us. Now, another thing starts to happen. Remember that warping geometry thing? On the story Call of Cthulhu, a guy literally falls into an angle. They can't get away. Things are distorted. This is going to be happening. Things are starting to look different at first, then they're going to start to be different as the topology changes to fit the, th the 3D world is starting to warp. Among other effects, distances are going to be shorter for the star spawn. He won't have to travel as fast to go somewhere. But the distances are going to be longer for you. Remember those nightmares you have where you're running and running and you can't get away and the thing is right behind you? Well, that's going to be real with the star spawn. It'll be just like a crappy slasher movie where like Jason from Friday the 13th, the guys are running down a road a long ways to get away from Jason and suddenly he's right there in front of him. How does he do that? Well, the star spawn can actually do that. 
because he has that ability. So when a star spawn is around, those dreams become real. That's how it is. He doesn't move as far, we are moving further. Those dreams become reality. You might get in your car and drive super fast and then find yourself rolling back into town on the same road. It's like a loop, a closed loop. There's no escape. As the world's geometry decays around you, buildings, roads, other recognizable objects will start to deteriorate. They might become unrecognizable. You might not even be able to recognize other human beings because the light rays passing through the air are now non-Euclidean, so your vision is distorted. Or rather, it's probably not that your vision is distorted, it's that for the first time, you're seeing reality as it truly is, not filtered by your brain. That could be worse. And we haven't even gotten to the point where the star spawn's attacking anyone. Right now, it's just the peripheral effects of him being up and mobile. 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 Star spawn's been mobile. Attacking anyone. The point where he's attacking mobile.